Subscribe to join us and our travels as we share our life on the sea. So this morning we left a missile and we are heading for Ambon. So this is, that was the last little bit of Rajarampad actually, so that's a little bit sad. Ambon is about 160 nautical miles away and depending on the wind we may do a few stops, we may not. Kind of got nice wind today, we're sailing along and we've been sitting, we waited out at this island that we stopped at, we were only going to stop there for one day but we ended up staying there for two days because the wind was on the nose but looks like we got good wind today babe. Oh, it's light and bearable. Light and bearable which is a lot more nice than really strong winds on the nose and lots of squalls. So that was what yesterday was, hey? Anyway, we are cruising along nice and quietly with the sails out. Hopefully all the way to Ampon. It's about 5.30 in the morning. So we may probably do an overnight before we stop. We'll go about 100 nautical miles, I reckon. You reckon? Captain's full of words this morning. A nice little Spanish mackerel here, nice size, smaller the better I reckon, lower the chance of Segatera. Beautiful eating fish. Whoa, I think we another one. Forgot about the line going out. There she is guys. Spanish mackerel. Oh, so it didn't last very long. The wind is very light and variable. We are very heavy boats, so we have to put our motor on if we want to move faster than two knots. Lee just got a fish. So we got fish. So it's very nice to have fish. It's got a Spanish mackerel, so I might cook it up today and I'll show you what I make. All right, guys, I've been filleting mackerel for about 30 years now. And it's taken me 30 years to come across this technique from Matthew on Nalakai to show me how to fillet it really easy, neatly. And you got no blood, no bone, and it's just, it, it, with bigger fish, bigger pelagic fish, just to break it down. Better get these ready for lunch. How come you're going so slow? We might start the engine soon.
I'm gonna stop talking to the camera. I'm gonna keep cooking and I'll show you uh, what we have. I might make some kind of maybe like a cucumber salsa -y. I don't know, something. I'll make it up to go with it with some rice. I have to find ways to fill up charge. Charge is a hungry, hungry person. And he's already had, he had, I made like egg frittata things for breakfast. He's had about three pieces of bread with a um, big fillet of fish. And this is lunch. And hopefully that fills him up <laughs> until dinner. It's a little bit of a struggle. Um, we haven't been to the shops for a little while now. Uh, we haven't actually been to a major town for ages. We were in the last one was Sarong. We went to Tabello, which uh, we did our, v our last two V's is at, but the town wasn't really big, so we couldn't really provision. We're very low on uh, butter. We haven't been able to buy butter for about two, three, three months, and uh, a few other things that we missed. So we're looking forward to getting to a big town so we can provision up. But I'm gonna keep cooking. I don't wanna burn this side like I did the other ones, so. Well, here you have it, all served up, ready for the crew, and they were bloody delicious. Alright oh, guys, so it's been a while since we've had any form of oh, what you would think to be piracy, I'll say. Um, we all know Indonesians are curious, but we are in the middle of nowhere. We're coming from uh, Misul to Ambon, so we're in the middle pretty much. Um, we're a fair way from land, we're a fair way from any town. Uh, this vessel, they've changed course, they're heading our way, they increase speed. We thought they put their AIS off, but it's come back on again. Um, it's quite a big boat. We're just taking a few precautions. Uh, well, the boat uh, disappeared. It went behind us, didn't come anywhere near us, didn't bother us, so. We always get a little bit, a little bit cautious because you never know, but I think it's, you feel so vulnerable out here today because there's no wind. We can't go any faster than what we're doing. And we had nowhere to go because we're in the middle of nowhere, so nerve wracking. But the captain was prepared back there. We, um, we had contact with friends in Australia. We had their number from their boat and I kind of knew it'd be fine, but you just you just never know. So we always just take precautions. We're going super slow. We're going to be there. I don't know in a very long time. Feels like forever. Not sailing. We're motoring, and we're just waiting to get into some better current. I feel like the current is against us, but it's all good. It could be worse. I mean, if we left last night, it would have been super rough, so. We would have had wind, but it would have been rough and squally and storms, and today's been really mellow. 80 miles until our anchorage, and at three knots, you can do the maths. That's how long it's gonna take us. <laughs> After we get to our anchorage, we're gonna get to Ambon, which is another 60 nautical miles. Once we get to this next part, though, we should have current and we should have wind. Fingers crossed. Anyway, we're gonna keep motoring on. Stream of current running down the middle. We just haven't hit it yet. We should get in it. We should jump on in it soon. We're gonna get in it. Get on in the current and the ride the EAC. Is it EAC? Uh, it's the EIC East Indonesian Current. The EAC is Australia, mate. Uh. <laughs> I need to get to the East Australian Current EAC. Oh, dude. You're riding it, dude! Check it out! <laughs> I just wanted to get in there and ride the EAC, dude. No, we're gonna get in some current, we're gonna go quicker, and uh, we will be there tomorrow. Unless anything exciting happens, we may not see you till then. We just did do something um, a little bit exciting. Boats that came over from Australia, they brought us some stuff. Thank you, John and Andrea. And we have just eaten, well, I haven't eaten them all, but I was eating uh, bullets. So when we get a, we got a packet of licorice bullets, Daryl Lee licorice bullets. If you haven't had one ever, get yourself some because they're delicious. 
I don't eat a lot of chocolate, I don't eat a lot of sweets, so it's a treat of mine. But we just opened our packet. Bella has divvied them all out and we have our, our own little cup full of uh, bullets. And I am just munching on mine. The problem with these cups, they seem to have a hole in the bottom. Lee has nearly finished his. Taj has eaten all of his and I'm pretty sure Bella hasn't had any of hers, so. I think I've, I've done, I've had about six. And the, that was a highlight for today. Having a little bit of taste of Australia, a bit of taste of home. It's morning and we're about 50 nautical miles away from Ambon. And we had a pretty crappy night. There's a lot of wind on the nose, strong winds, storms. It wasn't real fun and now we're still punching into a sea. We're going about four knots for motoring along. About 10 nautical miles away from where we can turn a corner and we should have better wind, but we gotta get there first. Yeah, it was pretty crap. Lee and I were on, Lee was on watch most of the time. I slept up there and I think he woke me up every hour or so and had a little bit of rest, went back on watch and then off, on and off all night. So we were both pretty tired today. But anyway, so it can only get better. Looking forward to turning the corner and looking forward to dropping the anchor and just having a bit of a sleep. Hopefully that'll happen a bit later today. But yep, we're a good five hours from the corner and that's where we're going. We're going to make some breakfast. Hopefully the wind turns or something. Uh, we stopped last night, which was such a great stop. It was such a relief to stop. We were we had not the funnest 24 hours, and um, it was really good to be able to drop the anchor and have a good night's sleep. Felt so good. And today we left that little stop, the little spot where we stopped, and we are heading. I think we're 45 nautical miles today to a little stop just before Ambon. Um, we are sailing along. It's so nice because our last passage was horrible. So this is lovely. We are sailing about four to five knots. Five knots. Five and a half, six knots. Oh, five and a half, six. Got wind on the beam. Engines are off. It's very nice. So today is a good day. I'm looking at my old track. Look at this. That's my old track. Don't look at the speed because it's probably relevant. <laughs> um, look, now let's have a look at our chart plotter. See here? We're making our way over the reef. Some would say you'd actually be over here. Those boats uh, that tried that path are actually still all underneath the water over there. But the way we do do it, guys, is see this. The old overtail or satellite navigation. You can see where the channel is there. Without this, yeah. 
It's in the sun. Yeah, right we'll get it down here. Still can't see it. Yeah. But without that, don't bother coming into Indonesia. If you don't know how to use satellite navigation and you want to rely on your chart, have a look where you'll end up. It's about two foot of water over there on the reef. So, little heads up. I better pay attention to where I'm going though. <laughs> For those of you that are new here, we are on a 44 foot Sparrow cement monohull and we are traveling with awesome family on a 50 foot aluminium catamaran. Obviously they beat us to most anchorages most days. And when they don't, we like to give them a hard time because you know, we're slow. This last passage, they haven't been able to motor as one of their engines is playing up. So we have been getting in first, but today we have the wind and we are both sailing. So of course it's a race. For the moment they had the lead. We got our sails set wing on wing and well, that white dot in the background is Nalakai. They got nervous with the squall and reefed in, but old Catalpa was loving the 20 plus knots of wind while it lasted. Oh, here we go. 
This girl might be old, but she gets us places we can only dream of. Thanks for watching.